my first good view of Mount Bachelor. I'm coming for ya. Oh, around you, not over you. Oops, I think I was wrong. That's Mount Bachelor. The other one I think was one of the sisters. A cute little meadow, don't you know? Wow, pretty sweet view here. And I think I got the mountains figured out. I got Mount Bachelor, a sister, and another sister. I don't know what sister is what, but pretty cool. Well, this is the Lava Lake Resort. And I like how the first thing on the list is craft beer. And they even have another sign out here. A bunch of different beers on it. I know, that's campsites. But the top says 10 Barrel Brewing Company. Not only did they have beer, but they also have this frappuccino and a chocolate chip cookie, ice cream cookie. And a bench with back support with a view. Like, winning. Just can't get enough of this view. Having a hard time leaving. But, the trail's calling my name. Two red ants carrying a big black ant. Oh man. I understand why Lava Rock Lake is called Lava Rock Lake. It's because it's surrounded by all these really sharp lava rocks. And the trail's kind of been scattered with them. So it makes it a bit challenging and I don't want to fall on these sharp rocks. So I've been taking it easy and walking when I need to. So back at the lake, I had to make a decision whether or not I follow the OTT or I diverge and take the Metolius Windigo Trail, number 99. And it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, it was built for horses. And it was part of the original OTT for a couple years. But, was it last year I think, they changed it to not include the single track. And it sounded like the reason was um, there's been some conflict and, and stuff with horse riders and bike riders on the trail, especially towards um, sisters and Ben because a lot of people use it. And I think there's been some issues with the horse people not very happy. And so the OTT decided to go around it, but it adds like 15 more miles, a lot more elevation. There's a section I think that's 35 miles without water. And it's a lot of dirt roads, fire roads, and busy highways and paved roads. So of course I opted to do the harder, less fun way. JK. No, I decided to do this trail um, it'll take me pretty much all the way to Sisters if I stay on it. And I don't know, the reason I decided to do it, it's single track. It's I'm okay with sharing it with horses. I'm pretty nice and courteous when I meet other trail users, whether it's a hiker, a biker, a horse rider. Um, so yeah, I decided to take it. There's more water on this way. There's more lakes, more camping options. And 
shorter, less elevation, and more fun. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for me. Um, I do have a question, though. I mean, one thing I don't like about the trail is horses do make it bumpy sometimes and sandy. I'm um, not complaining. I'm just saying that, you know, that's part of part of the trail. Um, and, yeah, I could choose to go around and not use it so i'm not complaining um but i do have a real serious question i know that um like dogs on trails you're supposed to pick up their poop and even humans like you're not supposed to just shit on the trail you're supposed to dig a hole and bury it and and everything but horses for some reason are loud to crap on the trail and just leave it so I'm just again I'm not complaining I'm just curious why that is um, does anyone know the answer is it because it's inconvenient for a horse rider to get off and you know scrape it off and put it in the woods or is it because they maybe eat a lot of hay so it's just kind of mostly hay and that's okay um, I don't know. I've been thinking about it the last couple miles, and I'm really curious. Um, so if you know, please comment below so I can answer that question. I take that back. I hate horses. <laughs> the last couple miles I've had to walk. 98% of it because it's been too sandy too bumpy or just uphill or whatever so on the horses um but you know they have just as much as a right to be out here as me so you know i should maybe just take the detour <laughs> um we'll see i'll connect back with the ott and i don't know 10 miles or something and then I'll decide if I want to keep on this trail or go on that one that might be more fun I don't know so sister and a lake looks like I made it to Mount Bachelor Ski Resort where's the snow Kind of cool, you can see the big old chalet up there. And there's still a little bit of snow on some of the runs. Cute little creek. It's almost the middle of July and still snow on the trail. Wowzers. Not a lot, but a little. Turns out I was wrong. There's a lot of snow on the trail the last mile or two. But that's almost better than the horses, to be honest. No offense, horses. I'm a little bit disappointed that I've been carrying snow for the last couple of miles to uh, chill my beverages. I guess I could have just gotten some snow here. Well, looks like I either have to ford across the old creek or take my chances on this little snow bridge. I think I'm gonna try the snow bridge. Wish me luck. This episode sponsored by Ten Barrel Brewing Company. Not really, but I wish it was. Uh, if, if you work for Ten Barrel, let them know. I would love to be sponsored by you. And that brings me to a real quick point. Um, a lot of people wonder, shouldn't I be hiking and not drinking so much? Good question. Uh, the reason I like a cerveza or two 
is I think a lot of like you mountain bikers can relate after a long hard day of riding or even a couple hours you finish you get to the you know parking lot and how good does an ice cold beer taste once you you're done you know you earned it it just mm, something about a good craft beer at the end of a ride is amazing I think and it's not like you get wasted but just like one or two maybe three it relaxes me kind of makes me feel more comfortable it's a nice nightcap it makes me sleep um, and the best part is instead of taking like ibuprofen you know or Advil whatever because you're you know it's hard work you're doing 20 30 miles a day and you get to camp and you're a bit sore and um, you just want to stretch and you also just want a beer and it just kind of makes your muscles feel a bit better and you, you don't hurt as much and I didn't plan this trip I thought I would drink a lot less to be honest but it's just worked out where you know most nights I've had access to it or I've carried it with me or somehow or another I've been able to have a drink or two which is cool I think um, I don't overdo it I mean two nights I probably overdid it but you know that's not bad out of a couple weeks and speaking of stretching I forgot to stretch so I'm gonna stretch I'll get right back to you but in the meantime listen to these pro tips Pro tip by Unicorn. First thing you do when you get to camp, put your beverage of choice into the snow so it can cool off. If you don't have snow, you can carry it with you in a Ziploc bag. And if there's no snow at all, then find a nice cold spring or creek and make a little holding area for your cans. Pro tip. Another pro tip. If you can't wait for that beverage to get cold, if you put it in snow or ice or ice water, and twirl it around for two or three minutes that beverage will be ice cold when you open it up uh, another pro tip when the uh, sky's getting dark and it looks like it could rain maybe go set up your tent instead of <laughs> cool your beer ah uh, nah here is more important. Yet another pro tip. Before you take a ice cold smart water bottle shower, make sure you get a nice fire going. You can even try to make the water a little bit warmer by putting it by the fire. Make sure that you've had two beverages to get up your courage and have your clothes and towel nearby. Pro tip. 